service out here but anyways I don't know if you guys can see that the stretch is 15 Salt Lake down to Las Vegas that's where I'm at so there's been multiple times where I've come through here at night because I used to run team with my dad and um, I used to run the night shift so I do like a, a 5 to 5 I do 5 p.m. to like 5 a.m. so I was always up super late and one time in particular, um, I was coming through this stretch, and um, I think I was on my own at this point, but I had seen three solid lights, kind of like this, solid in the sky, just like moving very, very slowly. And I know they weren't planes because planes have flashing lights on them, and it, it, just, it just wasn't a plane. I knew it wasn't a satellite because they were too big to be satellites and I couldn't figure out what the hell it was. Um, so yeah, you know how you get into the canyons coming down here on the 15 and um, it just, I don't know, I think Nevada just kind of has that eerie kind of strange phenomenon kind of vibe about it. I can't explain it. You guys that have ran night shift might know what I'm talking about maybe I'm just a crazy person but yeah I've seen stuff in the sky before um, on another on another occasion I was coming through here same stretch and it was a meteor shower and I, I at least I probably counted 20 30 40 meteors I don't remember I lost count but um, it was pretty cool coming out here in the nighttime and being able to see these Hulk green or like these vibrant orange just meteorites just flying into the atmosphere and then they burn out and just kind of trickle out you know what I mean like it was it was just kind of cool but just all night long one would go by and then you would wait another five ten minutes and you're still rolling you see another one and then you know some of them were shorter and some of them were longer and some of them would last you know what I mean they'd go and um yeah, so yeah, those those are two um, cool little things that I've kind of seen. I've seen all kinds of stuff, but I want to talk about this one night in particular. I believe I was running a team with my, my pops, and uh, we were up in Idaho, up in the mountains. And this particular night, it was full moon. It was lit like it was daytime outside. And I was up in the mountains through the S curves, like I was through the thick of it. And um, I could see clear as day outside. So I'm rolling along, you know, 35 mile an hour turns, easing down in through these turns and everything. And um, let, 
me just kind of give you the landscape of it. So there's two lanes on one side. There is a big concrete barrier in the center. And I believe, I don't know, this it was a really high concrete barrier. This this barrier must have been at least 10 feet tall. At least it seemed like it from what I picture it in my memory. And then there was two lanes on the other side. So creeping through the mountains, going through the S-curves, and I see something up in the distance, up in up in my headlights. And I'm like squinting, trying to check it out, and I'm coming up on it. Like I'm coming up on it. Don't know what it is. But there's something up in my headlights. That is all I know. And the closer I get to this thing, it starts coming into my into my vision, into my headlights. It's a bobcat, okay? And I shit you not, okay? So you have, I was obviously in the right lane because trucks ride in the right lane. And then you have the center dotted lane and then the other lane. This bobcat, leaped from the center lane one hop and like I was coming up on its ass I swear I was gonna run this thing over right in front of my truck right in front of my headlights hops from the center lane on top of this concrete barrier and I think he hopped to the other side to the medium it was like two hops it was like bam bam but yeah that's just one of my crazy stories I guess you have to be there to really I guess embrace the experience and uh, that, that'll stick with me basically for a lifetime but you know just coming up on that bobcat in the, in the full moon like that and and seeing it leap like that like it was nothing to him just one hop on top of the concrete barrier another hop over to the other side of the road and it was gone um, so yeah that's um that's a few of my stories right there. We'll see, there was one other that I wanted. Story number, what is this, three, four? Um, man, I got a few of them, I got a few of them. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about this story. This one doesn't pertain really to truck driving, but it kinda does. Um, so I had my brother and my friend uh, Darius with me and my brother was playing in the World Series of Poker and we somehow ended up in Prim, Nevada and Prim's just you know if you if you guys been there it's on the border of California and Nevada and it's just kind of got one of those eerie vibes you know you got the Bonnie and Clyde car the real one that's been shot up there um, you got Whiskey Pete's and then what's the other truck stop across the street Anyways, um, you know, we, we were going to Vegas basically for my brother to play poker and, um, you know, I had my buddy with me and everything and we were staying, I believe it's at, at Whiskey Peace. It's the one with the roller coaster rides, uh, that go, they, it literally, it starts inside and it goes out and then there's a water ride throughout the inside and it's all old. It's all old fashioned, bunch of like the water rides have like dead cowboys and just weird stuff like the whole vibe of the place is just extremely just kind of eerie and weird so anyways we get checked into our hotel um, this particular night and they put us up on the top floor and we were already kind of getting strange weird vibes like the people kind of seemed like Texas Chainsaw massacre type people just kind of odd weird vibe awkward body language just it was just weird weird vibes were going on going on all night so anyways we finally get checked in get our room keys and we get in this old creaky elevator i think it, we went up to what was it the 21st floor the 12th floor i don't remember what floor it was but it just happened to be that when we were walking down to our room that our room was the only room with a flickering light <laughs> and it was just eerie it was this old creaky hallway if you guys have ever been there and you can imagine this it's just it's just eerie vibes so anyways we get checked into our room and you know I think we were doing some slots we went back downstairs did some slots did that type of stuff and uh, 
I think that night we had two queens, so I was sleeping like head toe, and we were swapping beds. So I'd sleep head toe with Darius one night, and my brother was on the other bed, and then with somebody else would get the bed the next night. But we woke up in the middle of the night. I don't know if you guys know what sleep paralysis is, but sleep paralysis is basically like where your body goes to sleep, but your mind's still awake. You can kind of hear what's going on around you, but it was kind of like that. But me and Darius both woke up at the same exact time to a shadowy figure and both ran in opposite directions. He ran straight into the wall. I ran straight into the TV, knock it over. And yeah, so that was, that was the first night. That was the first kind of weird, eerie, strange thing that happened other than the flickering light. So the next day we're down in the hotel and there's there's this old lady talking to her husband and I remember we were getting ready to come back up in the elevator and she's like Boris or his, the man's name was Boris and I actually have a friend named Boris and um, she was saying something about to her husband Boris Boris this or whatever I don't know what she was saying but when we got to the top to our floor my friend Boris texted or snapchat me a picture that said ghost of christmas past and it was weird because two minutes prior this old lady was talking to her husband named boris and we were already talking about ghosts like why would he send me a picture or a snapchat like that saying ghost of christmas past at that particular moment in time it was just so that was another strange thing that kind of happened and um so that was weird. And then I, I believe the next night, this it was just uh, everything that about that whole trip was just eerie, weird, weird juju vibes going on. It was just crazy. It's so like the next night, I don't know why, I couldn't tell you why I did this. I get online and I'm Googling my name, right? So I'm Googling my name, Chad Bratz. That's my name, I don't care if anybody knows. So I'm Googling my name and I'm looking at all this stuff, like trying to pull up my old MySpace or something, you know what I mean? Like I'm just, I don't know why, I couldn't tell you why I was Googling my name. There ends up being another Chad Bratz that tweeted, and I found this on Google, it was a tweet from Chad Bratz, from the same exact location, Whiskey Pete's, that wasn't me. And I was just like, what? Like, are you serious? Like how? how what kind of coincidence is that like that's that's kind of insane like that's just like that's just that's extremely weird that all of these things have have happened over like a three-day span that's just been anyways so yeah that's the last that's the um story number four i'm gonna i'm gonna do one more story for you guys this one's kind of kind of stuck with me but um I think I was doing the night shift again. I was teaming with my pops. And no, I might have been solo at this point, actually. But I was on a nighttime shift. I was on graveyard shift. And I remember I was in Louisiana. I'll never forget this. But I rolled over a dead body. Not physically. I didn't run over the dead body. But there was a motorcycle accident that had happened. And it had just happened. It was fresh. And guy was laid out on the concrete dead as a doornail right next to his bike and I think there was already help there at the time but this this has just happened there was already a couple cars maybe pulled over or whatever for help and, and I just remember you know rolling down my window and looking out of my door like literally I could literally step out of my door if I were to stop in the road and step out of my door the body was right there and I'm just looking at this body. Hadn't even been covered up yet or anything like that. And, oh man, that just uh, kind of gives me chills thinking about it. But that just, seeing something like that, it sticks for you. It sticks with you for a while. You know what I mean? It, it just, it sticks in your head. Um, so, you know, I said a prayer. Um, you know, I tried to... Yeah. 
I don't, I don't even know. It just stuck with me for a while. I said a prayer, and that's really all I could do at the time. And you know, I kept rolling, and um, you know, I thought about it. I probably thought about it all night, and uh, it's just one of those things that kind of, kind of stick with you for a while. But um, anyways, you know, if you guys thought this this was cool, you know, story time after night. Um, I could do more videos like this. I got tons of trucking stories. I got trucking stories on top of trucking stories on top of trucking stories. Um, I've been out here almost a decade. I've seen a lot of stuff, but if you guys want me to do more videos like this, hit the thumbs up on it. And, um, you know, down below in the comments, let me know some of your craziest trucking stories. Do you guys believe in weird juju? Do you believe in ghosts? Do you believe in you know, UFOs, do you believe in strange phenomenons, coincidences, just weird stuff happening. If you guys have some weird stories, let me know. I'd love to hear them. Put them in the comments below. Anyways, smash that thumbs up for me. Um, like, comment, subscribe, and um, I, uh, I hope to do another one of these guys. So I'll see you guys in the next one.